So AL amyloidosis can deposit anywhere in the body. The only place where it doesn't cause disease is within the brain. It can affect the soft tissues, which is where you tend to notice easy bruising, fragility of the skin, so bruising particularly around the eyes, in the beard line in men. It can infiltrate into the tongue, causing a thickened, stiff, sometimes sore tongue with blood blisters. It can infiltrate into the nails, making them feel fragile. So there's no single test that can look for amyloid or say how bad amyloid is, so we do a number of tests. One of the specialist tests that's done at the London Amyloidosis Centre and really in very few other places in the world is the SAP scan. This makes use of a completely normal body protein, serum amyloid P, which will stick to amyloid. We can label it with a radio label uh, and then inject it into people and after it's settled down, usually for between 6 and 24 hours, we can do a scan and look for where the uptake is, which tells us where amyloid is. The amyloid uh, infiltrates into the heart and makes it stiff, which means that it's difficult for it to fill and then to pump the blood out. And that tends to present with heart failure, causing breathlessness and also accumulation of fluid behind the heart with swollen ankles, sometimes a feeling of abdominal discomfort because the liver is getting a bit swollen. It can also cause low blood pressure from that. When the kidneys are involved in amyloidosis, it can both begin to not work so well as a filter, to start leaking and leaking important proteins out into the urine. An early symptom of that is that the urine is very foamy, it's like egg whites. Kidneys can start working less well in terms of cleaning the blood. That's usually noticed on blood tests, that doesn't cause any symptoms till rather late. Eventually, if the kidneys really aren't cleaning the blood at all well, it can cause renal failure and mean that people need help with the kidneys in the form of dialysis. The nerve involvement comes in two sorts. There's autonomic neuropathy, which is damage to the automatic nerves that control automatic functions in the body, like heart rate, blood pressure, gut function, genitourinary function. And that tends to present with symptoms of this not working so well. So low blood pressure when you stand up, sometimes feeling that you're going to faint or actually passing out, disturbances in heart rhythm, um, sometimes quite bad gut disturbances with alternating diarrhea and constipation. The peripheral nerves are what we much more think of as being nerve function. Those are the nerves that control sensation and also muscle movement. Involvement in that can cause what's called a glove and stocking neuropathy, which is when the long nerves are damaged just by having a little bit of amyloid along their course. Then you can get numbness and tingling in the fingertips and toes. Sometimes that can be painful. You can get what's called lightning pains. You get a sudden electric shock-like pain, which comes and goes instantly, particularly in the legs. Sometimes it's just an irritating, numbing loss of sensation. Sometimes people come having lost some blood from the gut and can cause uh, alterations in gut function with weight loss, diarrhea, vomiting, um, sometimes constipation. So the major treatment for amyloidosis is to treat the underlying disease and in AL amyloidosis that's chemotherapy to uh, kill the cells that are making the amyloid forming proteins. The difficulty with chemotherapy is that even once it's worked it only stops new amyloid being formed and it takes time for the body to start to clear away the amyloid deposits. So as well as chemotherapy you have to have treatments that are aimed at trying to control and minimise the symptoms that patients are getting from amyloidosis and these are given in combination with the chemotherapy and may need to be continued for some time afterwards. <laughs>